got a wish? Many people in the land of the rising sun would usually visit a shrine, offer 5 yen and pray to the gods. But what if? You can get a god on speed dial. While her classmates are talking crap about her, middle schooler Mutsumi sees a phantom or Ayakashi outside their classroom window, scared. She prays to god for help. Little does she know that there's one nearby. Yato and his regalia or Shinki partner Tomone hear her plea. As they stand outside the school building, Yato flips a 5 yen coin and declares that her wish has been heard loud and clear. Tomone notes how huge the phantom is and Yato tells her that everyone is stressed out since it's exam season. Phantoms feed off of the negative energy from people after all. Size doesn't matter because Yato performs well with Tomone by his side. The god jumps and calls out Tomone's regalia name, Hanki. With Hanki in his hand, he cites his incantation to rend the phantom. Thou who dares desecrate this land of the rising sun, I now lay waste to thee with Hanki and expel thy vast defilement. After neatly slicing its body, Yato comments that it was just a plaything for his regalia. Once Tomone returns to her human form, she sniffs herself and complains about how disgustingly sweaty his hand is. Before he can even rebut, she tells him that she's quitting. Surprised, Yato counters that it's only been three months, but Tomone angrily yells that she can't take it anymore. Tomone starts sobbing, which forces Yato to release her. With that, her true feelings show and she taunts him while fleeing. Thanks for nothing, you jobless, sweats-wearing bum who calls himself a god. Ouch! But Yato isn't about to let her have the last laugh. No, sir. He yells back, saying she'll come running back to him once he makes it big. He'll have 120 million worshippers and be a god amongst gods someday. Yes, keep dreaming, Yato. And so Yato is now back to his daily routine, being the delivery god. After spray painting his number on a wall in a park, he takes a break and pulls out his bottle of savings. With what he has so far, he still can't build even one shrine. He also needs to find new regalia first, because even if he's a god, he's essentially unarmed without one. He thinks he can't take on any basic jobs anymore, but when his phone rings, he enthusiastically answers. The caller asks for his help in finding Milord. Of course, he's ready. On the busy streets of the near shore, Hiyori Iki and her friends, Ami and Yama, see a poster of a missing cat, whose name is Milord. They laugh at the fact that some people actually give their pets names like Lord, King, or God. While Ami and Yama bicker over their favorite bands and members whom they call their gods, Hiyori is preoccupied with something else. When her friends ask who hers is, she tells them, I've finished downloading my god. How much more modern can this world get? First, a god you can call via cell phone and now a god you can download? Seeing what Hiyori is watching, Yama apologizes. See, Hiyori's kind of a closet martial arts fan. Her parents don't know anything about it and Hiyori thinks that her mom will throw a fit if she discovers she's into that kind of thing. The girls continue walking, asking Hiyori if she likes someone other than the martial artist Tono. You know, someone who's within her reach? Thinking of an answer, Hiyori gets sidetracked when Yato passes by. They glance at each other and she's surprised when Yato Yato starts screaming. Yato finally sees Milord and immediately runs to the middle of the street. But Hiyori suddenly pushes him out of the way, trying to save him from, you guessed it, Truck-kun. Well, technically, it's Bus-kun, but you get it. Ami and Yama panic as people say a girl jumped in front of the bus. But Hiyori didn't jump. She saved Yato. Or did she? On the sidewalk, Hiyori scolds Yato for doing something dangerous. She's right. He could have died, but that's not important right now. Yato looks at the more important thing happening. Hiyori follows his gaze and sees Yama calling out her name while holding her unconscious body in the middle of the street. Huh? Did she die? Hiyori wakes up in their family's hospital. Her mom, in tears, asks her dad to examine her. The doctor quickly does his job and calmly says she's fine. Ami and Yama hug each other in relief. It's surprising how Hiyori was hit by a bus, but all she got was a few scratches. While her parents discuss letting her spend the night in the hospital, Hiyori asks about the other guy who got hit. But her friends say no one else was there, and her dad thinks her memory's just still hazy. Feeling weak, she no longer argues even if she's certain someone else was there. She even remembers seeing herself on the street too. Hiyori is awakened by the sound of phantoms that night. She hears someone ask, 
so you can hear the voices of the far shore? Hiyori jumps out of bed and Yato teases her that she must be fine if she can move like that. He eventually thanks her for saving him and tells her he's a god. Now, what would you do if a weird man barged into your hospital room claiming to be a god? Call the police? Yep, Yato panics, telling Hiyori he's not lying. He is really the genuine, bona fide Yato god. Mm-hmm, she definitely hasn't heard of him. Well, okay, Yato is just an up-and-coming stray god, but just watch and he'll soon be known far and wide, a god that everyone bows and prays to. Someday, he will stand above all the other gods of the island. Hiyori stares blankly at him as he daydreams and talks about his job. After Hiyori tells him her name, Yato says they're now even and jumps out of her window. While in class the next day, Hiyori wonders if seeing Yato the night before was just a dream. She clearly remembers his sweats though, so it must be real. Hiyori and her friends walk by the poster of Milord again after school, she slowly regains her memory after seeing it and decides to look for the cat in hopes of fully remembering the incident. Meanwhile, Yato is still searching for Milord when he hears a loud meow. He finally finds the cat and when it runs into his arms, he realizes that phantoms are surrounding them. Even if the phantoms are weak, they're a lot to fight, so Yato runs away. However, they're faced with a bigger, frog-like Ayakashi. Forgetting that he has no regalia, Yato puts Milord inside his shirt and charges at it. But Hiyori suddenly appears and pulls him out of its path, saving him again. The phantom uses its long tongue to attack, but Hiyori strikes back, hitting it with the savat martial arts move of her favorite Tono. Yato is surprised while Hiyori is delighted that her great god helped her. When the Ayakashi gets back up and charges toward them again, Yato grabs Hiyori and flies them away to safety. While catching their breath, Yato points out her tail and says her soul has slipped out. Confused, Hiyori looks behind her and yep, she indeed has a tail. Yato then points at the girl's unconscious body hanging on the fence, which shocks her. Don't worry, she isn't dead, her body's just asleep. Before Hiyori can process what she's hearing, she collapses back into her body. That same night, Yato returns Milord to its owner and carries Hiyori to her house. But when she wakes up and realizes who's carrying her, she starts hitting Yato and calling him a perv. She looks for her tail and questions again if everything is a dream, and so Yato finally explains that due to the accident, she's now stuck between the near shore, where the living reside, and the far shore, or the afterlife. Basically, she's alive, but at the same time, she's a phantom. He says that phantoms are the embodiments of emotional energy. They possess people and cause all sorts of trouble. The news has Hiyori screaming, so he clarifies that she's just a half and half, but losing her body will be a common for her now. Oh, and he doesn't know if she can return to being 100% human, so best to just accept it. Hiyori begs Yato to help her out. After all, he's a god, right? But then he asks for payment, raising his hand to show how much it'll cost. 5,000? 500,000? Oh no, she doesn't have that kind of money. Hiyori, he's a god, remember? Everyone knows you're supposed to offer 5 yen coins to gods. Dumbfounded, Hiyori looks for a coin and hands it to him. Yato flips it, saying, Your wish has been heard loud and clear. Hiyori Iki, may our fates intertwine verily. Days pass and Hiyori starts adapting to being half and half. She shampoos her hair in half phantom form while her human body is asleep in the tub. Seeing and hearing phantoms seems normal to her now. At school, while changing for gym class, Hiyori's soul splits from her body again. Her friends are also used to it now, so they carry her to the infirmary. Hiyori watches them from a tree, thinking about how tough her situation is. But after birds fly by, she hops on the power line and thinks it's also fun in its own way. She plays around on the wires and sees phantoms in the distance. As she focuses, another one surprises her from behind, making her fall on the street. Ayaka Kashi are everywhere. They come in all shapes and sizes, all denizens of the far shore devoid of life. Only young children, animals, and those who exist between the near and far shores, like Hiyori and Yato, can see them. Hiyori sees a baby who gets scared of a phantom and playfully wags her tail to stop it from crying. After jumping on a power pole again, she spots a black haze in the sky and realizes that this is what a storm is, a dark aura that Ayakashi are attracted to. Feeling uneasy, she recalls 
tells that Yato said people become gloomy and lose control when possessed. Speaking of Yato, he's busy writing his number inside a train when he receives a call from Hiyori complaining that it's been two weeks, yet he still hasn't helped her. Yato says he eventually will, but he needs to deal with something else first, causing Hiyori to doubt him again. He teleports to the park where she is to prove a point. Come on, Hiyori. Humans can't do that. He's really a god. You should treat him with awe and wonder. Hiyori finds him sus because of his outfit though. Sorry. The tracksuit and bib ensemble is fishy. Yato sulks, saying it's not just a bib, it's his fluffy woofy scarf. Uh, yeah. Hiyori's had enough, especially after a couple in the park murmurs about her talking to herself. This also earns Yato another question from her. How is he different from a phantom when he's invisible to most people too? Interesting. It's fascinating that Hiyori asked this because, as Yato says, she's more of a phantom than he is. Just look at how she's out of her body again. Looks like you dropped something. Yato teases. He sure knows how to be annoying, but this god also cares. He warns her to be careful because, as a living phantom, she stands out. Once an Ayakashi consumes her soul, she lose who she is and cross a line to the living hell. Thanks for the warning, Yato. But in that case, you just need to fix her. Hiyori has paid her 5 yen in advance, so they already have a contract. There's no going back now. He also needs that coin to save up and build his big shrine. And once again, he's lost in his daydream. Hiyori breaks his bubble, stubbornly asking him when he will help her. Finally, Yato explains that he can't do it until he finds a new regalia, weapons for gods. Aha! So that's why he's completely useless right now. When Hiyori asks where his old one is, he lies and says he fired her, further explaining that a regalia is human, a spirit to be specific. Before Hiyori can say anything else, Yato receives a call and disappears. Frustrated, Hiyori decides to take matters into her own hands. However, she's quite lost in what spirits means and asks phantoms to be Yato's Shinki. After talking to small ones, she follows the storm in the distance, hoping to find one there. Yikes, not a very good idea. Meanwhile, Yato is working hard cleaning a bathroom to receive a 5 yen payment as usual. Well, at least this time, he also got a can of beer. As he's about to end his day in an old shrine, he gets another call from Hiyori, claiming she finally found him a Shinki. The god teleports to where she is again, only to discover that the regalia she found was actually a huge phantom. Run! As the pair speed away from the Ayakashi, Yato says that's no regalia but a twisted ball of emotions and curses. Hiyori says she thought of it too but remember that the god told him not to judge a book by its cover. Oh, so now she listens to what he says? She shouldn't have bothered. She should have bothered with how she left her body behind again. When the Ayakashi attacks them, Hiyori attempts to fight back, using her tail as a distraction. Yato stops her and gets his arm bitten instead. He manages to strike back, making the creature temporarily retreat. Once they are at a safer distance, Hiyori asks if Yato's arm is okay. He prevents her from touching it, saying it'll blight her too. Being blighted is defilement that spreads and eats you away unless exercised or cleansed. Yato then warns about her tail not being an actual tail but a lifeline that connects her physical and ethereal forms. If it gets cut off, she'll die. Suddenly, the phantom spots them and they run off again. They argue about helping each other out when Yato abruptly stops upon seeing an uncorrupted spirit in the distance. It's a teenage voice, a difficult age, but he has no choice. With this name and its alternate, I use my life to make thee a regalia. Thou art Yuki, as regalia Setsu. Come Seki! A katana appears in Yato's hand. He sees a montage of the spirit's memories and collapses, getting swallowed by the phantom. Hiyori watches in horror, screaming out his name. Yato awakens inside the Ayakashi and chants the rent as he rips its body from the inside out. He falls from the air, lands on power lines, and then drops to the ground. Before he gets back up, Hiyori sees tears fall from his eyes. After the fight, Yato is cleansing the blight at a shrine when Hiyori arrives, having found her human body. Yato says they got lucky and tells her the regalia's name is Yuki, or less formally, Yukine. The katana reverts to its human form, a teenage boy in a white robe. He introduces himself as his master and offers his jacket to the shivering boy, but he immediately gets rejected as it apparently reeks of sweat. Hiyori offers her scarf instead, and Yukine accepts. Yato stares blankly into the distance. Will he ever have a regalia that respects him? The next day, Yato rummages through a charity bin to find 
my clothes for Yukine and brings him to a restaurant to eat. Not inside, but behind it, where he serves him a sardine. Does he expect Yukine to eat that? Well, yeah, he's his regalia, so what his master says goes. When a stray cat steals the fish, Yato takes it back while continuing his monologue about how a regalia must respect, worship, and serve his master, adding that Yukine should at least go and serve some tea. But they don't even have a place to serve tea. Yukina never would have guessed that being a god means drifting around town, sleeping in the corner of some old shrine to avoid drawing attention, and picking through trash bins for their necessities. Yato spray paints his number on the wall again, telling Yukina it's for missionary work. Just then, their stomachs rumble, and the younger wonders if Yato is a god when he can't even provide food. Don't give me that look, I'll show you what I can do. Yato sits across from Hiyori in the restaurant and proudly says, see how charismatic I am? Yukina thinks it's more like extortion than charm though. When a waitress serves a glass of water and asks for Hiyori's order, Yato calls her attention and asks for three glasses. The server is surprised, failing to notice the two boys before. It also confuses Hiyori. She thought people can't see them. Yato clarifies that they're not invisible, just hard to notice. Once noticed, they're seen as normal people but quickly forgotten since they're from the far shore. After eating, Yukina and Hiyori wait for Yato outside the restaurant. The boy thanks her for the meal and asks how she knows Yato. She tells the story about her loose soul and then asks what he did before becoming a regalia. Yukina doesn't really remember anything when he was alive. The farthest he can remember is when he was suddenly a katana in Yato's hand. Just then, the sardine thief cat from earlier walks towards Yukine and Hiyori crouches beside it. He blushes when he catches a glimpse of her chest. Yato, exiting the restaurant, feels a stab of pain and immediately scolds Yukina for having a dirty thought. Apparently, gods and their shinki share the same mind and body, so he senses any wicked thought in the boy's mind. Suddenly, Yato receives a call from another job and instantly teleports. They accidentally bring half-phantom Hiyori after she jumps to catch them from running away. It's about time they do her job request. Yato thinks they were called in for a fake job as a trap, but the god of learning, Denjin, starts speaking. Both Hiyori and Yukine immediately recognize him. The pair bow down, mesmerized by his godly aura. The complete opposite of… Will this MC's suffering ever end? Tenjin asks Yato for Yukina's name and calls one of his shrine maidens, Tsuyu, to explain that it's disrespectful to bow to another god in the presence of the one he serves. Hiyori gets excited upon seeing the beautiful ladies. They introduce themselves as the Tenjin sisters, and Tenjin clarifies that they're his regalia. Finally, Tenjin says that he needs Yato's help to eliminate phantoms. The god of learning has his hands full during exam season. Yato has nothing else to do anyway. Before he can even answer, Tenjin Jin taunts him, he opens his purse, pulls out a bill, and teases that Yato's probably a little low on change. Hiyori and Yukine watch the ridiculous scene in front of them. They can't believe there's also income inequality for gods. This must be why the world's so unfair. After all the mocking, Tenjin tosses a 5 yen coin to Yato and calls upon his newest Shinki, Mayu, to show them the way. Surprise! It's Tomone! Hiyori and Yukine approach her excitedly, asking what it was like to be Yato Shinki. To their disappointment, Mayu says, Yato was a homeless and jobless guy in sweats who called himself a god. After the ex-partners argue like a couple, Mayu takes them to the railway. She explains that the area is often plagued by storms, allowing Ayakashi to corrupt and take control of people. Iori is determined to help, but Yato declines. He says, if someone wants to die, I say let them. He explains that a soul can't even become a regalia if it has been completely possessed. Whether whether they are dead or alive, it makes no difference. Hiyori gets mad at this and flees. Yato starts walking away too, but Mayu reminds him it's already a done deal with Tenjin. Yukine cuts in, asking if it's okay to let Hiyori run off like that and eventually persuading him to do the job. Meanwhile, Hiyori finds an Ayakashi on a schoolboy's shoulder and successfully kicks it. But more phantoms appear and they capture her, tying her to the tracks of an oncoming train. Thankfully, 
Yato and Yukina in his katana form rescue her on time. Now, the real work starts. As the train moves, they see another schoolboy possessed by a phantom. He almost jumps in front of the train, but Yato quickly saves him, slashing the Ayakashi and, well, other things. Hiyori walks up to Yato and Yukine. She's delighted that the god helped her after all. Yato shrugs, saying he only refuses to let anyone die in front of these guys. Hiyori ponders, all the regalia she's met so far are young and innocent, which means none of them died from taking their own life. They must be people who still wanted to live. Having others waste their lives in front of them is something Yato can't stand. The girl tears up at their realization. Later that night, Yato and Yukine sleep at one of Tenjin's shrines when the younger is awakened by the cold. Yato tosses the jacket he took from the charity bin to Yukine, telling him he did well in his first job. The boy glances at Yato and lies down, covering himself with the jacket. A chance encounter changes Hiyori's and Yato's lives forever. Hiyori now wants to return to her original state, while Yato's hell-bent on being remembered. Here's to hoping they both achieve their goals. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.